Hello again, and uh, I am here recording the overview for chapters one and two in the content marketing textbook, uh, immediately following the chapter one overview from Essentials of Social Media Marketing. If you have not watched the uh, social media chapter one overview yet, I would suggest hopping over there first, as I will be mentioning a couple of topics that we just discussed. So uh, this will be a short video. Chapters one and two in the content marketing textbook are pretty broad overviews. And I'm just going to take these next few minutes to show some key examples from those chapters. We really are just kind of um, exploring the definition of content marketing today and talking about how it connects very, very, very specifically to social media. Again, I started doing some of that last in the last video, um, and I'm going to dive in more today with this one. So uh, let's go ahead and... Um, and do that. So I'm only, again, like last time, I'm only going to share a couple of slides that uh, pertain from these chapters. Uh, and actually, most of them are going to come from chapter one. So um, I'll turn my, my video off here um, as I'm looking to the side. So I, I want to start with where content marketing originated or where they claim it originated. And actually, before we even go there, um, Let's go go back one slide. Um, the definition of content marketing in this in this course, we'll really use this one from the Content Marketing Institute. This is one of the first organizations that existed to not just define and call it content marketing, but also to make it a business model. And the founder of that company, his name was Joe Polizzi. He is uh, one, probably the most famous author in content marketing. He now has another company called The Tilt uh, that is very similar. But he's exploring some other some other things. He's got a coin. He's got a, a called the Tilt Coin. He's got some events that he does. He's kind of expanding into the outer reaches of content marketing today. Whereas in the Content Marketing Institute, when it was founded 20 years ago, really focused on the main four key forms of content that we'll talk about here in a moment. This definition here is going to be uh, reviewed at, at length over the next couple of chapters, specifically starting with um, the first part, which is the idea that uh, content marketing is the marketing and business process for creating and distributing valuable and compelling content. That's the first part. The business process for going, like essentially creating and ensuring that people derive value from your content. The second part, which will be looked at in a separate chapter, is um, attracting, acquiring, and engaging a clearly defined and understood target audience with the objective of driving profitable customer action. So that is taking a piece of content. It's not overly promotional. It may not even have anything to do with the company, but it helps to build trust, um, uh, some, some authority, and some familiarity with an audience so that upon later interactions with a brand, um, you can get them to eventually become a buyer. The, the very first, the earliest form of content marketing that we can find here, at least in the history of the Western world, is Benjamin Franklin's Poor Richard's Almanac. Some of you may remember this from social studies in, in middle school or high school, whenever that was. Um, and you probably remember that it was a farmer's almanac that had some puzzles, it had some uh, weather patterns, it had some, uh, some, some essentially details to help farmers plan for their crops for the next year, um, had some short stories, things like that. It was really a, an encyclopedia of sorts of the 1700s. Um, but that, like, the question becomes, you know, why did he do this? And the reason was he had a printing press and he printed this book on the printing press and he used this book to promote the printing press and the quality of product that he was printing out and distributing. He sold north of 20,000 copies of this. And I think he did it for, I, I think I found 25 years. So he did this for a long time and it became essentially his form of marketing where instead of walking up to a a potential customer and saying, Hey, I have a printing press. Would you like to print something? He could go up to somebody and say, Hey, check out this, this epic book that I not just created, but that I printed. 
um, knowing that it's a potential customer, it's a great conversation starter, doesn't sound overly salesy. Eventually you get to the point where, hey, you know, I do have this printing press where I printed this book, would love to show it to you sometime. Maybe you'd like to print your own stuff there. It becomes a more natural conversation. He built trust, he built a relationship, and eventually was able to get some business for his printing press. That is the oldest version, again, that we as content marketers can find. Uh, some more contemporary versions exist. And um, specifically this book that I found in my own house. Um, most of you are probably familiar with Costco uh, and the, you know, buying in bulk. They have everything. You go, you end up spending hundreds of dollars. They have really cheap gas, but the gas always has lines that are down the street and around the corner. Um, well, Costco actually was in the, uh, the, the cooking business. And what they would do is uh, they'd print a book. This is from 2007. And they would have celebrity, uh, not so, maybe not celebrities, but famous chefs uh, create these dishes, these recipes. And they would always include a Costco brand or similar, Kirkland, uh, ingredients, most of which you would get from Costco. And by selling this product and this book on in stores and probably online in the early days, people would get it. They'd say, oh, I want to you know, make this uh, whatever this food is here on the cover. They would realize, oh, I need to go to Costco to get all these ingredients. Um, it's the, the ingredients are listed. The recipe is listed specifically by um, ingredients that Costco has. So if you want to use if you don't go to Costco to get your ingredients, you're going to have to find a substitute of some sort. Again, another form of content marketing where um, Costco is showing these really visually appealing um, meals with well-known at the time kind of food influencers with these celebrity chefs, people that would appear on the Food Network back in the day. And then they would get you when it's time to go get the ingredients themselves so that you'd go to Costco, buy their products, buy their, utilize, you know, their, uh, all of the food that they have there, get it home and then make your, make your meal. Uh, you know, I look at that as more of the written content side. I know there were a lot of elements there that were, were involved, but, um, something a little bit more modern, more recent is this, um, this infographic. This is not the entire infographic. This is only the first three pieces of it. Um, if you want to learn how to wrap a sprained ankle, um, you can just Google it to see the others. Um, I just had room for these three pieces. And what REI does is they will publish infographics that are strictly there to educate people. There's no sales pitch. There's no, I mean, there's a link to the website, but there's no super sales pitch and it looks pretty informative on the surface. However, there are links to the website. And if you go there, it'll go right to the section where you can buy a first aid kit, for example. And suddenly you have yourself a product that you can buy. A lot of these are really helpful. When I was looking up, I kind of went down a, a wormhole and uh, checked out all sorts of different infographics that they had. Um, there, was, uh, there was one on how to treat a burn, how to treat a, a, a bite from a bear. Like if you get attacked by a bear, I think you have bigger problems, but you know. Um, interesting content for sure. And, uh, it's really done well, done really visually. And, and I think a lot of people get, get a lot of value from this because they're learning how to wrap a sprayed ankle. Um, I look at this type of content marketing as even more uh, subtle than the last one because, um, it's not, you know, this isn't a product that you can only really get at REI, but again, they're building a brand, building a relationship so that, when it does come time for you to go buy that first aid kit with the tape and all these different materials, um, REI comes to mind first, maybe not CVS, maybe not uh, Cabela's or wherever you would go. Um, so they are, they're making inroads with consumers. And I actually found this on Pinterest, weirdly enough. And the fact that REI is active on Pinterest is showing that they are, uh, you know, they're really looking at all different audiences here, or they're very, very good at knowing their tar their own target audience as well, which you'll learn more about specifically as it relates to Pinterest later on in the course. Then the last example I want to share, I think this is the last one I have, or no, there's a one after this, 
is if you look at Costco's uh, book and you think about what that would look like today, it's all online. All of the major baking companies, Pillsbury, Kraft, um, uh, some other ones as well that are escaping me at the moment. When you go to their website, you're not just finding a list of ingredients, you're getting a list of recipes that you can make with their ingredients. And Pillsbury was the most interesting one to me because they really lean, in, re- lean into it hard. Not, and they also put um, some savings, as you can see on this image, um, for some of their products. And not only that, but you can also look at where the offers are. Like I'm looking at this here and I just put Meyer, and I don't even know what zip code that is. It's not mine. Um, but you could feasibly go to the Pillsbury website, look up, in a, look up a recipe that you want to, that you want to do, um, and see what kind of savings are going to be near you at a store that sells Pillsbury products. To me, this is really interesting because it takes content marketing to another level now where it is um, even geo-targeting you. It's got you down to your location. If I'm on my phone looking at this, maybe in the, while I'm walking through Meyer, for example, it's going to be really powerful stuff because I'm going to be able to see um, these discounts real time and probably down to the moment that I am reaching for that box of flour that could help me make a microsecond adjustment and buy the Pillsbury brand if, if there is such a thing. Um, last thing I wanted to show here is how people consume media. You saw in the first chapter of the Essentials of Social Media Marketing book that um, people spend about a seventh of their lifetime on social media now. They spend two and a half hours per day on social media, um, which means a lot of it is kind of the death scroll, reading posts, looking at the back and forth, uh, looking at the vitriol that exists with some of these trending topics. And if you look at media in a broader sense, people are spending half their days interacting with media. Um, if you think about how content falls into this, you think about how looking at the past examples, you know, if something like Pillsbury, if they're promoting a, uh, the, the big thing from Pillsbury that I did was a, um, it was like they were, they were mini, mini churros and I found the recipe on Pillsbury and somebody had tweeted it right before the Super Bowl. And I was like, I'm, I'm hooked. I needed some, I needed something to cook quickly. I ran to the store to get the ingredients, used the Pillsbury website to do it. The fact that I came across it on social media by one of their brand people was really effective content marketing for me. It was timely and relevant, but then also um, it was just kind of out there, you know, Hey, you're the Super Bowl's coming up. Check out this, uh, this churro ring that we just created. Oh man, that's epic. And I was all over it. So the idea kind of to repeat what I said from the last, ch- uh, piece in, uh, chapter one of the essentials of social media marketing is there's no social media without some, a content marketing element to it. Sure, there is, I mean, social media may exist, um, but there is, unless you're just promoting original thoughts and, and you know, jokes or something from a branding side, um, it's really hard to pull off social media successfully and show those successes as it pertains to the brand and as it pertains to the bottom line without some sort of content strategy um, to accompany it. And when we look at content itself, that's where I segue over to chapter two. Um, We look at content in this course really in a, in four basic forms. And um, I'm going to share the screen again. Again, there's only a couple of slides here, but we're going to really focus on four main types of content here. Probably have already gathered this, but there's written video, audio, and visual. There's a chapter on each of these, you know, I'm not going to go into the deep definition of all of them today, but um, these are kind of the main ones that we'll be dealing with. There are other forms of content, of course, the more recent ones, for example, are NFTs, uh, things that exist out in the blockchain world, uh, which is great. You know, that'll be an, an addition I'll be making to the uh, course where in the next year, um, there's other things, there's events, there's, um, you know, there's quizzes like a Buzzfeed quiz, which I think are going out of style now. Um, there are, you know, there's like a calculator, there's a tuition calculator you might've done on the uh, ill school website when you started your program, 
there's all these different types of content that exist. Um, they're boiled in the five chapters for me. There's one chapter on each of these, and then there's another chapter that's more of a catch-all for all the other types. And so we'll be looking at those as we go throughout the semester. And for your sake, you know, that you want to think about them through the lens of social media, how that content is shared, how, how it can be shared, and how different audiences consume uh, that content. So I uh, just want to make sure I, I capture it here. Um, as I mentioned before, this is part of the uh, content marketing definition that chapter two digs into uh, the bolded piece here. You know, how do you create and distribute valuable and compelling content? And how does it attract, acquire, and engage um, that target audience? So, um, you know, last thing I'll wrap up with here. Um, if, for you to have an effective content marketing strategy, you need to have different forms of content. You need to be able to create value, of course. We've talked about that before. Um, and you need to think about not just what happens ahead of the purchase, but then also what happens during and after. Um, you want to make sure that you know, you're not just pushing somebody till eventually they become a customer, but you want them to be a brand advocate, brand ambassador. You want to inc increase that lifetime value. So we're going to dig into all of this as the semester goes on. This is just kind of the jumping off point today. So, um, you know, that wraps up chapters one and two in the content marketing textbook. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and I will see you next week for the next video.